Uh, so good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us uh, for this virtual presentation on the multilingual older persons COVID-19 support line. Uh, I would for firstly like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that we are all on today and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging, um, and also acknowledge the Ngunnawal people whose land I am on here today in Canberra. Um, I would now like to introduce Lisa um, from the Centre of Cultural Diversity in Ageing and Gabby from Spectrum, who will be our presenters today. Lisa will provide an overview of the support line and what support it provides um, and also provide some background information um, about how the line was created, et cetera, while Gabby will provide some more information about its application and the usefulness to settlement service providers and their clients. Um, and we'll also share of some projects um, that Spectrum are doing in this space. Uh, there will be time for questions um, at the end. So please send these through the Q&A box or the chat box. Um, and we yeah, look forward to hearing, hearing your questions. Um, but without further ado, I'll pass on to you, Lisa. Thank you so much, Samantha, for that introduction and um, for the opportunity to present to such an important audience, um, people who are in direct contact with families with older people um, and doing the work on the ground. So, you know, while we're in our offices doing all the policy stuff, um, you're actually working in the complexity of um, human rights and equal opportunities. So I just want to acknowledge that. So my name's Lisa and I'm the manager of the Centre for Cultural Diversity and Ageing. I'm going to be talking today about our multilingual older persons COVID-19 support line, the first multilingual support line for older people. Um, it is a pilot program and we're really um, grateful to the Department of Health and we'll be um, giving you an overview of the program. <clears throat> Before I do that, I'd like to just give you an overview of the Centre for Cultural Diversity and Ageing. So um, the Centre for Cultural Diversity and Ageing is funded by the Department of Health um, and it is part of the Partners in Culturally Appropriate Care Program. And the Partners in Culturally Appropriate Care Program is funded by the Department of Health to support culturally appropriate and culturally inclusive care in the aged care system. Um, <clears throat> our vision at the Centre is to ensure that all older people in Australia experience inclusive and accessible care. And we do that through um, supporting aged care providers and leaders around how to um, build the capacity of their service system to promote inclusive practice. We provide diversity advice and consulting to the aged care sector, including the government. And um, we also provide multilingual resources and diversity training and um, inclusive practice training. Um, we do provide training to migrant resource centres and settlement providers who are working with older people as well, not just those specifically um, so that are just uh, aged care providers. We do we do support um, community services at large. So, um, you know, I think that we are the only... Um, organization, the PCAC Alliance is the only alliance that is looking at cultural diversity and ageing and the intersectionality between age and cultural diversity. So, you know, um, there's been lots of changes in aged care. We know that there, we're looking now in May for the government to give us some outcomes of the Royal Commission. And um, unfortunately, uh, culturally diverse um, consumers, we say, or older people, I guess, who use more human language, uh, were not really um, considered in the Royal Commission reports. However, there is mention of some kind of consideration around cultural safety, um, but, you know, it's still a long way to go. So just to give you a bit of a context there. Um, we are also funded at the Centre for Cultural Diversity and Ageing for our national website. So if you go to our website, um, you'll be able to get a, a range of different resources um, for our national audience. And we have um, a section for consumers and carers, and we also have a section for service providers. Um, if you go under service providers under upcoming training, we also have our monthly webinar series from now until November. So I'm um, just um, anyone's welcome to join those webinar series. 
And that has been in response to the aged care sector and what they've asked us that they want to know. So things like how to use interpreters effectively, how to um, do effective translations, how to, um, to apply a diversity lens to dementia care, applying a diversity lens to consumer directed care and cross-cultural communication. So we've had over a thousand applicants so far, but we've, we've got unlimited registration. So please um, register if you're interested, any of your staff. Um, and <clears throat> we also have our conference coming up in June. So um, just keep in mind, um, they're all for free. So hopefully you can keep updated. In relation to our multilingual um, health and aged care information, um, that we are a hub where we put up-to-date information on um, aged care services, um, the translat translated materials from the department and from other um, sort of uh, other, other peak bodies, for example, in a range of topics. So um, you can print them out and give them to your, to your clients. And um, obviously there's the COVID-19 um, translations we've just received from the department around the new vac vaccinations as well. Um, so we've tried to keep our, our website updated with all that. Um, the centre also has our multilingual resources that we create ourselves and we have um, communication cards and aged care signage in 57 languages that can be put in residential care facilities. We have consumer feedback forms in 12 languages and we've also tried to promote our interpreter cards. Well, it's not our interpreter cards, it's the Victorian government interpreter cards, but with the communication cards, these are used um, to depict daily activities and situations that can help to assist with communication in aged care. So things like personal care, feelings and pain, religion and spirituality, um, medications, um, recreation, food requirements are all in the communication cards. And the interpreter cards, which are available for the Victorian government, which you probably already know about, so apologies for that. Um, we, we try to always raise awareness to older people and their families, advocates and carers about these interpreter cards because they can simply put it in their wallet and show a service that they have the right to an interpreter. So I've given you an example here of the Maltese one, but on our website, we have a range of languages that you can print out and fold for your clients. <clears throat> Now, back to the, uh, so Samantha, do we have time for questions now or all the way at the end? What would you prefer? Uh, we, can, we can do either. Probably if we keep the presentation going and then just keep the questions at the end would probably work best. Sure. Sounds great. Um, now, in terms of the um, multilingual older persons COVID-19 support line, um, well, it's a lot of content, but just to give you a bit of a bit of a background of the of the line itself. So the English speaking older persons COVID-19 support line was launched in April last year by Minister Colbeck. And it gives information and support to older Australians, families, and carers about COVID-19 um, policy changes, updates, information around travel restrictions. Um, entering into residential care, visitor rights, um, things like that. And obviously now it's about the vaccinations mainly. Um, but not only does it give COVID-19 updates to the caller, but it also can um, link them to anything in relation to aged care, the aged care system through the Older Persons Advocacy Network um, as it relates to complaints to aged care, elder abuse, um, clarifying the consumer pathway around accessing my aged care um, and uh, clarifying what they can get in their package and things like that. And they can also get information about dementia care. And that is um, with, the, with Dementia Australia, who's part of the line. So it's not just COVID updates. It's also a holistic aged care uh, information service. Between April and October last year, the English speaking line received around 5,000 inbound calls and they also conducted outbound calls to about 29,000 members of the community. Um, in November, the, the minister said, you know, let's continue the line. And the PCAC Alliance, primarily the Centre for Culture, Diversity and Ageing, in line with the PCAC Alliance, advocated for a culturally inclusive approach to the line through a multilingual phone line. So we wrote a proposal, it was accepted. And that was obviously to support culturally and linguistically diverse 
communities. Um, so it is coordinated by the Centre for Cultural Diversity and Ageing with support from the PCAC Alliance and um, funded by the Department of Health. The aim of the um, line is to support access for culturally and linguistically diverse communities to get information about from those three um, topics that I just mentioned. So aged care services, dementia support and COVID-19 updates. And of course, it's to do that by reducing the language barriers because research has shown, and not just research, but um, delving deeper into the idea of let's just call TIS for a English speaking service was extremely low. The TIS usage was extremely low um, in the sense that if we have around 30% of our community that have an, a, a, a language other than English, why don't we program to a 30% of our community getting that support? Um, whereas we found that the TIS usage was 0.014% in the English speaking line. So it's it, it disproportionately low. Um, and therefore um, we need other models of care for people to call and get access to information. So we trial, we're trialling this multilingualism approach. We aim to and have a vision for multilingualism to be embedded within mainstream services, for lack of a better word. I know mainstream is a contentious word, but when we look at the idea of, say, the, the big people, the coders, the, the National Seniors Australia, how do, how do we incorporate diversity and multilingualism? Um, anyway, this one is on the side and um, we're just having a bit of a, a warm handover really to, to the services. So I'm not going to go too much into the project partners, but there's a lot of people involved. Um, Spectrum is, and all graduates are overseeing the call centre component with the multilingual workers. And of course, the Department of Health is funding it. And we've, we're promoting it uh, through a range of different ways. Um, obviously, like these, these kind of forums where we uh, attend network meetings, but also um, our ethnic radio campaigns. So the National Ethnic and Multicultural Broadcasters Council are doing weekly ethnic media um, uh, scripts and, and, and audio files and stuff like that. So it's um, repetitive across Australia, of course, as well. Um, and then the other organisations are CODA Australia, Older Persons Advocacy Network, National Seniors Australia and Dementia Australia manage the English speaking line concurrently with the multilingual line. The multilingual line is available in six languages. Um, they're the languages there. And of course, it is a national service. And we have chosen those languages based on the 2016 census. So we just sort of, you know, looked at people over 65 who um, have limited um, English language fluency and need assistance um, with, um, and are needing assistance that they put in the census. So there's a, there, were, there were three indicators there. And these are the languages that came up. Now we have had inquiries about some other languages that always miss out and we get that. We understand that. Um, Let's talk about the need because at the moment these are the six languages. But of course, if there is a need, I'm happy to to, to receive any emails around any any other communities that might need support. Because then we can then put that in our recommendation report to the department around the sustainability and continuation of this program model. Um, at the moment, it's operating from two to five. It's live chats are available from two to five Melbourne time. Um, and Monday to Friday until the 31st of July. So, of course, it is a, a pilot program. Um, <clears throat> just to give you a bit of an overview of the caller journey. So, um, I'm not going to go too much into it, but basically it's a warm handover to the English speaking line. So, the person doesn't have a conversation with the multilingual worker the whole time. The multilingual worker receives the inquiry, explains to the caller what OPAN is, what Dementia Australia is, what CODA Australia do. And then they receive all the information from the caller in language. They send an email to that organisation about exactly what the person needs. And the organisation calls the caller back with an interpreter. So again, it's that warm handover model rather than um, having a conversation with the multilingual worker about everything. Because we... we um, we, um, excuse me, just one moment. 
<laughs> They're my little puppies um, that bark at every single thing that moves at the moment. Anyway, um, so, uh, so yeah, so we're just trialling this model at the moment. But we have had feedback that really we should be having people that speak like that our case workers in a way that when someone calls it, they actually deal with the whole case. But we don't have that at the moment. We have multilingual phone support workers that have been trained in aged care services that are interpreters and and sort of um, have been upskilled in, in, in providing intake and referral services. And we have also a referral process. So what that means is that any service can, provider can make a referral to the multilingual phone line um, for an outbound call to be made to your client. In order to make a referral, um, you can visit our the PCAC Alliance website. We've got the link there, and you just can make you can make an online referral. The form takes about three minutes to fill out, um, or you can simply ring up the line for that language and make a referral um, via phone as well. And here is um, the brochure. So they're the six numbers. Um, and there is all the images have been community checked and um, they're the partners there. So you can actually print out that brochure from the PCAC Alliance website um, yourself. And here is an example of a brochure in language. So we've also got six brochures for the six languages. And, um, and again, we've got the English version and the language version. And just in terms of promoting the program, we just like to for you to send us an email if you wanted to promote it, because we like to keep the messaging consistent and the images consistent, especially. So we do have a, a marketing approach to this as well. And everything can be found on the PCAC Alliance website. So that's about it from my end. Now I'm going to pass it over to Gabby just to talk a little bit about Spectrum's involvement with multilingual phone lines and um, the vision for, for, for cultural diversity and inclusion. Thanks, Gabby. Thanks very much, Lisa. Um, very interesting presentation. There's a lot of information in there. So hopefully um, people on this uh, call might be able to get the PowerPoint and uh, have a read of it in their own time. I see from the uh, chat boxes that there's some really interesting questions that uh, Spectrum as a migrant resource centre has really ha had a go at tackling during COVID. Spectrum as a migrant resource centre is in the northern suburbs of Melbourne and has been around for 40 years. I feel like we've come full circle that we are continuing and still providing resources in language to cultural and language diverse communities. Um, during COVID, we found that there was a real oversupply to some extent of information regarding COVID and messaging. A lot of it uh, not particularly accurate. So we worked with All Graduates, who is a translation and interpreting service that many of you may know and have used. Um, to actually evaluate the veracity, the accuracy of the information provided by both state and Commonwealth governments. This particular pro project uh, was funded by um, department in Victoria. Um, and it was really about jobs generation. So it was working for Victoria, which was a jobs uh, activation program. So what we did is we recruited and employed a range of um, navigators, information navigators in language uh, to really understand what information was out there and available often very heavily embedded 15 clicks down from uh, Commonwealth and state uh, websites, uh, not appreciating that not all uh, called communities are literate, have internet access, uh, etc. Um, so we did a range of evaluation of different sources that were out there and we found that they're very, very challenging to actually access for people, especially English speakers have um, just as much trouble or more, more trouble because there's more information available for, for English speakers. Um, so this project that we worked on actually collated and collected all of that information and actually put it onto channels that were in were in language only. So you didn't have to click through sort of 15 links to get to your language of choice. We actually curated a lot of those for quality um, and also for literacy levels. Um, also acknowledging the different migrant groups, different language groups have quite variable levels of um, literacy, um, ability to read, etc. And 
generate different generations in different language groups consume information very differently as well. So what's appropriate for an 80 year old may be totally inappropriate for somebody who's 16 years old who gets everything that they want and need via social media. Um, so with this pro program of work, we realised that um, because there's so much information and the environment was changing so rapidly, we set up a navigator system once again in eight languages, not all exactly the same as the ones for the older um, person's telephone line. We also had um, Punjabi, Farsi and Dari uh, as languages in um, that navigator phone line, which is just wrapped up, unfortunately. So. Um, with those, um, it's, it's a similar concept of phoning through to those telephone numbers, getting help, but also getting information sent to you via SMS, text messages or email, uh, depending on what your preference is, so that we would send either a small PDF or a video or links, etc, to COVID related information that it included things such as family violence as well, accessing payments, uh, information about Centrelink, unemployment, etc. So not just about the disease, but some of the ripple effects that have an impact have had an impact on communities communities uh, through COVID as well. So it's been very interesting and that created a really opportunistic uh, moment for us to help um, the centre with uh, linking in with navigators in language to answer telephone lines. Um, it's been a really interesting and very challenging project to get information online with navigators, most of them trilingual so that they spoke two languages, thus covering the telephone lines and the hours available, which was um, a real challenge um, as we talk about the 2 till 5 p.m. issue, an issue for all uh, phone takers or phone answerers across Australia. Um, so we've got that in abeyance. We still have all the content on all of the systems. Unfortunately, we've had to let the people go, but uh, we are making pitches all over town at a Commonwealth level and at a state level to reactivate that telephone line. We see the opportunities, especially in oral language and in communicating simple messages as a real opportunity to open up communications to a range of called communities. So that's my big uh, word uh, salad to you. Hopefully you understood some of that. I'm very happy, Samantha, to send information about uh, the program of work. And we are launching a new website called In a New, In a new Culture, which has seven different language channels. So you don't have to navigate through English. You just go straight to your language and you can find different COVID resources that way many of which we've had to write ourselves because there's lots of gaps, especially in explaining to communities why they need to do stuff, uh, why you need to social distance, not just do it and wear a mask, but why it's an important issue. Uh, lots of gaps out there as well for communities such as can I travel overseas and how do I do that and seek permission and will I ever be able to come back? So we've got some interesting fact sheets uh, around those topics and issues. No, that would Samantha. be wonderful. Thanks so much, Gabby. And yeah, Lisa as well. If there's anything that we can be sharing with SETSCOP members, we'd love to share um, after, sure. um, uh, yeah, you know, for them to have more information. Um, I, I'm mindful it is a very brief uh, meeting today. and We've only got a couple of minutes left. Um, and um, so I might go to a couple of questions. Uh, we've got a question here about what what was the rationale, um, Lisa and Gabby, around picking the times 2 p.m. to 5 p.m.? <laughs> yeah, thank you for that question. Um, uh, so, as mentioned before, the multilingual phone line is a national program and Western Australia is three hours behind. So we were going to do it 9 to 12, but um, it would have been 6 a.m. for older people and it's not fair. So we did that. And the second thing is we don't have enough funding for nine to five, unfortunately. That's the rationale. <laughs> and of course, if someone calls outside those hours, um, they just have to press uh, a button and I think they've got to put in their, their phone number, the callback number, and someone will call them back during the live chat. Excellent, thanks Lisa. Um, next question is, um, uh, oh, sorry, lost where, what I was looking at. Um, can carers or settlement workers contact the support line for help? Yes, yes. Um, so anyone can call the support line, really. Now, 
you can call if you speak English as a as a as a caseworker, carer, worker, you can you can call the English line to get information. But if you prefer to speak in those six languages as a worker, you can call the line and just speak fluently in your language, for example. Um, the other reason why you would call the multilingual line and not the English line is to make a referral for your client. Um, or you can just call the multilingual line to get more information about the line for your client as well. Um. And last question, because I am mindful of the time. Um, where can people find more information about, obviously, the work that you're doing, Gabby, at Spectrum, um, and also, Lisa, the work that you're doing at the Cultural, uh, the Centre for Cultural Diversity? Um, so I'm happy to share my PowerPoint presentation to the audience, which has the website link. Um, or I can send the website link to all panellists now. I will do it now. It's picacalliance.org and you go to the multilingual um, phone line section. It's got all the brochures, all the forms that you need. And of course, um, I will send you the, um, the email address. It's multilingual at culturaldiversity.com.au if you've got any inquiries um, that goes to our multilingual phone line support team that can answer anything in, in relation to us coming out to talk about the line, um, promoting the line and things like that. Wonderful. Thanks, Lisa. And Gabby? Um, we are about to launch our, oh, can you hear me, in a new culture um, web address. I'm just uh, opening up the chat box, which I kind of can't see. Um, our web address is um, in a new culture, one word, but I'll send this to you later as well with some more information about what we're up to. In a new culture.org.au. And there's just an inquiry form there at the moment, but next week there will be seven language channels. One of those is English, where you can click on and find a curated uh, collection of COVID information. Uh, as well. We're going to also publish uh, an article about the navigator system and the trials and tribulations we went through in uh, vetting publicly available information. So that's been very interesting as a short term project. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you both Lisa and Gabby for your presentations today um, and sharing a bit more about the support line um, and also Gabby sharing about some of the work that you've been doing at Spectrum. We really appreciate you both making the time um, to share with us today. And yeah, look forward to receiving more information for us to distribute to um, the network more broadly. Thanks everyone for joining us um, and take care and we'll see you all soon. Thanks Lovely. so much. Thank you. Thanks everyone Bye. and well done. Thank Bye. you so much.